Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, still on engineering science and one uh, working on electricity. So we have the questions that we are going to work from uh, from August 2021. We have got uh, question 10, where we are given that different materials react differently to electricity. Okay, indicate whether the following are conductors or insulators. So given the materials, uh, 10.11 and aluminum. Is aluminum a conductor or not? Okay, so aluminum conducts electricity. So that's a conductor. If you are dealing with a rubber, a rubber cannot uh, allow, it does not allow flow of electricity. So that's an insulator, all right? Then a carbon, it's a conductor, this one. If you're dealing with carbon, guys, that's a conductor. So that's why we say do not press on electrical gadgets using a pencil because a pencil has got carbon. You can be electrocuted from there. All right. On 10.2, standardized uh, symbols are used to represent components in a circuit. Draw the IEC uh, symbols of the following components of electrical circuit okay a variable resistor on 10.1 10.21 so guys you're supposed to know this symbol so a variable resistor you draw your normal resistor then you are supposed to represent now with an arrow like this that's for a variable resistor or you can remember a resistor can also be taken even this way so you can even use this way then you indicate an R for variable resistor, okay? A battery, remember that a battery is a combination of cells. So you can have a cell uh, in this case, all right? Let's say we have got uh, something of this nature like that. It's a battery, okay? So there can be three, four, and so on, okay? Just two like that uh, representing, or you are showing that this is now a, a battery, okay? Then a switch. We can represent this with an open switch. So we are going to have this as our, our switch. All right, so that's what we had. Uh, on 10.3, the element in an electrical kettle has a resistance of 14 ohms, a current flows, or okay, when a current of 15 amps flows through the element, calculate the voltage applied on 10.31. On so remember that the voltage is the product of current and resistance. So we can multiply the current of 15 amps to the resistance of 14 ohms. So this can give us uh, the voltage in volts. So 15 uh, multiplied to 14, that is 210 volts. So this is going to give us 210 volts. All right, then 10.3 to the power. So it depends with the formula that you want to use, guys. There are so many formulas for calculating power. Uh, so this is, uh, remember, we now have the voltage here, which is 210 volts. So to calculate power, we can use so many formulas uh, from our formula sheet, 10.32. Uh, so remember that power is equal to V squared over R. P power is equal to VI. Uh, so you can do so many formulas. All right, so in this case, you can also use power is equivalent to I squared R like this, exactly so many ways. All right, so in this case, I'm just going to use the product of voltage and current. Voltage, 210 times the current, which is 15. All right, so if you multiply uh, 210 by 15, you're going to obtain 3,150 watts. Or you can convert to kilowatts by dividing by uh, 10 to the exponent of three or dividing by 1,000, which is 3,15 kilowatts. All right, so like I said, so many formulas that you can use, so many. So you just check which one was best for you, all right? Uh, so you're going to obtain the same answer from all the formulas that I listed there. Okay, so that, that was the power of consumption. Then on 10.2, we are given a circuit diagram. And from this circuit diagram, we are given that, calculate the total resistance of the circuit. Okay, so take note, these resistors, they are all in series. So we know that the total resistance in series, you add the resistance. So this is going to be R1 plus R2 plus R3. All right, that is R1 is 16 ohms plus 35 ohms plus 29 ohms. All right, so you're going to add everything 16 to 35 and 29, which is going to be 80 ohms in total. Okay, so this is the total 
resistance in ohms. So that is our other team. All right. Then on 10.5, name three factors that will influence the resistance of a conductor. Okay, I explained this one that whenever you forget this one, write down the formula resistance is equal to rho L over A, where this is resistivity representing the type of what? Of material. So we've got the type of material. We've got L representing the length of what? Of the conductor. So we've got the length of the conductor. In this case, uh, A representing the cross-sectional area of the conductor. So we've got uh, the cross-sectional area of the conductor in this case. So this is cross-sectional area of the conductor or just cross-sectional area. Then there is a physical factor, an ambient physical factor, which is not shown on the formula, and that is temperature. All right, so we are supposed to know that temperature is included. So pick any three or from these ones, you can have our answer. All right, that was 10.5. On 10.6, we are given that a change in temperature is an effect on current carrying uh, materials, all right? If a conductor like copper is heated, what will happen with the current if the voltage remains constant? Okay, if the voltage remains constant. Okay, so uh, the current will decrease because the resistance will increase. Okay, what are we given here? Uh, we are given what is going to happen to the, okay, if the conductor, what we have to the current. We know that our current, in terms of resistance is given as voltage over resistance. So here, what have you done? The voltage remains constant. This is constant here. So we are dealing with a constant, all right. So what is going to happen is that the change in temperature is an effect on the current, all right. So what is going to happen to, that is what the person is asking you. So the moment you increase this, resistance, the current is going to lower. The moment you lower the resistance, the current is going to increase because these are inversely proportional, okay? So that's why I'm saying the current will decrease with increase in what? In resistance, or the current will increase with a decrease in resistance. So take note about that one, okay? So that's it on 10.7. Uh, we are now given uh, the heating element of a geyser is a resistance of 20 ohms. So we're given resistance, which is 20 ohms. If the current of 11 ohms for 15 minutes flows, what, uh, what is the generated heat? Uh, what will be the generated heat? Okay, so it was the generated heat. Okay, remember that heat is equivalent to power times time. So in this case, we can check what we are given because we do not have exactly the power, but we have got resistance and we have got current. So take note from resistance and current power is given as I squared times resistance like this. So you can multiply current squared times resistance, then we multiply to time. We now have uh, the heat that is being generated in what? In 15 minutes. So remember that this time, is supposed to be measured in seconds. So you convert your time to seconds. So Q is current squared. Our current is 11. So that's 11 squared times the resistance, which is 20 ohms times the time in seconds. So take note in a minute, we have got 60 seconds. So we're supposed to convert by multiplying by 60. That's 15 by 60. All right, so this is going to give us uh, the heat uh, that is generated, uh, that is the heat energy in this case. Okay, so uh, from our calculator, all right, let me just show this screen so that we can have our calculator here. All right, so from our calculator, we are going to have 11 squared times 20 times 15 times 60, all right, which is going to be uh, 2 million. That is 2,178,000, all right? So we've got something like this, 2,178,000 joules, okay? Which you can leave it like that, or you can convert to kilojoules or to megajoules. Uh, so you can, we can utilize one, two, three, 
four, five, six. So you can convert to megajoules by dividing by one million or by multiplying by 10 to the exponent of negative six. This is going to be two comma one seven eight megajoules. Okay, so that is what you're going to have in this case in what? In megajoules, or you can simply leave your answer like that. All right, so that was question 10.7. We are going to move on to question uh, 10.8. Draw the magnetic field around a bar magnet. So it's just drawing the magnetic field, okay? So in this case, I want you to see what you're going to have. So this is our magnet. The, the magnetic fields, uh, remember, from the north to the south, from the north to the south, that is the movement of what? Of the magnetic field. All right, so that's what we had as uh, for a uh, diagram. So I think uh, this one is, is direct I, anyways, okay. A solenoid can be used in an electric bell. Name two ways in which the strength of the magnetic field can be increased. How can you increase the strength of a magnetic field? Okay, so there are so many factors that we have. Uh, we can increase by having more windings. So which means we must have more windings, all right? We can have, or oh, working with the ion core, all right? Uh, we can work with increased current, all right? So we've got uh, increased current. So these are the ways that we can have in which to strength, okay? Uh, in which the strength of magnetic field can be increased. Uh, so if you've got any other factors that you know, guys, please uh, mention them on the comment section so that someone might, someone can use those points. Please, uh, let's mention some other points. Uh, this can be of advantage to somebody. Okay, so that's what we had, guys, for Maison African Motives on Engineering Science N1 uh, Electricity. Uh, till we meet again.